Here from the CBS News Space Center in New York, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good evening. Apollo 8 is in its ninth and next to last full orbit of the moon. The astronauts, on the orders of command of pilot Frank Borman, are scrubbing all remaining items from their flight plan, except one more television transmission, which should come up very shortly now, because they are tired and need to rest before the critical maneuver that starts them back to Earth early tomorrow morning. About three hours ago, Borman ordered Jim Lovell and Bill Anders to sleep and told Mission Control, we're getting too tired, we're scrubbing everything, I'll stay up, but I want Jim and Bill to get some sleep. Mission Control in Houston concurred, saying that virtually 100% of Apollo 8's goals had already been completed during the first seven revolutions. That was picture taking. And let's watch now as uh, they prepare to receive the pictures from uh, this ninth orbit of the moon, the second and last of their television transmissions. They're just coming around on the uh, trailing side of the moon from their ninth trip around on the far side of the moon. Let's listen to Mission Control in Houston. I have no word yet on Goldstone. The voice is out of Paul Haney. I'm getting a carrier system. noise now, which is probably indicative of a transmission coming. The person you'll be hearing speaking to Apollo 8 is astronaut Ken Mattingly, who is so-called Capcom, Capsule Communicator. Still no calls. Although we are a minute and a half. We're a minute and a half into the acquisition. The Capsule Communicator has been advised to pass to the crew when we acquire that all of its systems look good. anxiously looking forward to this second set of pictures of the moon from 70 miles high from the spacecraft moving across the moon's surface at 3,600 miles an hour. Pictures to match those now, we got this morning. Uh, we've been acquired, we did acquire the spacecraft, rather noisy data. But data on the ninth revolution around the moon with an apogee of 63 miles and a perigee of 58.9 miles. Velocity of 5,352 feet per second. We've uh, got a picture here, and we've got a voice to go. I assume that shortly we'll get some explanation of the picture we're seeing. It doesn't make a great deal of sense uh, to me here at the moment. We're uh, theorizing here at that bright spot in the top left center of your picture is the Earth. It's not very clear.
they can get good, clear pictures uh, uh, from the spacecraft. The two so-called rendezvous windows, uh, one on each side of the spacecraft, and they're uh, presumably, as you heard, moving the camera now to another window. That last picture didn't make a great deal of sense, as I suggested uh, to me. The assistant. Houston, uh, we're not receiving a picture now, are we? are now uh, coming on to Smythe Sea, a, a small mare region covered with uh, a dark uh, level material. There is a fresh, bright impact crater uh, on the edge towards us and a mountain range on the other side. These mountains are the Pyrenees. Apollo 8, uh, we are not receiving modulation on the signal, we have to have sync. Are you reading us, Apollo Houston? Apollo 8, we're reading you loud and clear, but no picture. We have no modulation. Now, there's a clear picture of the frame of the rendezvous window and the moon what horizon. What you're seeing as we cross by sea are the craters Castor and Gilbert. Great impact craters that dominate the lunar surface. Absolutely. 
You're hearing the voices of Bill Anders. This is Bill Anders. And every once in a while, Jim Lovell comes in.